Well, top of the morning to you, YouTube. Welcome everybody back to Red Tool House. Today, we are going to not work on this. We're actually going to convert our energizer over to battery power and also incorporate some solar. Let me explain why. Okay, quick recap. We built our mobile coop, finally finished it. And the purpose of that is to get the chickens out of their winter abode, which is the greenhouse right here. Get them out of there, get them here on green pasture, help keep the pasture eaten down, get it all nourished and all that kind of stuff. And I've already seen the, uh, the fruit of that effort. The chickens are more excited, they seem more vibrant, and we're getting more egg production already. But we're in the third position now, just moved them this morning, so this is the third spot. And I've exceeded my extension cords that run from all the way up to the workshop down to here. And the point of that was, was obviously to use it while I had it, and then knowing that we're going to convert over to my 12-volt energizer that I have. Now, several of you have commented in recent videos, or the last video we did with the coop, about well, why don't I just energize this poultry netting from my pig, net, pig wire here that's hot coming down, and it actually terminates right there at the corner. Why don't I just use that? And that would work in this situation where I'm in our, our bottom, but as soon as I move away, it becomes an issue. So like the, the next place we're gonna move, probably on day six or week six, cause I'm moving a week at a time. Week six will be on the other side of the driveway here where the old farmhouse used to sit. So I want them to eat that down. Well, I don't wanna run wire across the driveway. Well, even if we could, that doesn't take care of the issues of going way up here. So we're going way up behind the house into the woods, into some small clearings, going out some of my roads that I want to have them eat down. So I really want to make this completely self-contained and completely portable so I can move it wherever. So that's why I'm not just doing a jumper off the pig, pig wire. That would work, but it's just a temporary fix, just like the extension cords. So the plan is to take my simple Patriot Energizer. This one is a 12 volt 110 option. You've got a plug that unplugs here where you've got the transformer to plug into a standard outlet or you can swap that cable out for the 12 volt as just the little alligator clips that can go straight to your battery so we're going to use that been really happy with the patriot i'm not sponsored by them or anything this is my third patriot seem to last really well they run my uh run all the north pasture and all the south pasture I have two different energizers for that and of course we got our battery brand new deep cycle battery not using a car battery of course using a deep cycle so it can handle that uh, extended load over time versus, you know, upfront cold cranking amps, all that kind of stuff. Um, so what we're going to do, instead of just energizer and battery, my original plan was energizer, battery, and a second battery that I just swap them out. So Joel Salatin does that. A lot of guys do that. They don't want to mess with uh, moving a bunch of other things around. But I thought, shoot, why, why do that? Let's, let's, let's complicate things and add more stuff to it. So I've got this uh, solar panel that I've had forever. I think this is a... Uh, yeah, 30 watt, 30 watt panel. Got a real simple charge controller. I believe this, I think this is like 10 or 15 bucks on Amazon, super, super cheap. I've been using these for a while, it's several years. In fact, if you've watched the channel, I've used this up at camp and done different things with it. So we've cannibalized that and, and gonna use these components to charge our battery. And you kind of have the solar hanging out there around the energizer, it'd be something I have to move every time but it'll be a way to keep the battery charged instead of swapping out batteries. These turkeys are expensive. It's crazy how expensive batteries are getting. And you may be wondering why in the world do I have a, a water pump here? Well, um, I'm going to cannibalize this thing. It's actually brand new, but I want the switch off of it and I want some of the wiring. At least I think I do. We're going to take it apart and see if that switch. Sometimes this has got a really nice waterproof switch on top so I can turn the energizer off and on very easily. But sometimes um, these... Um, foreign electronics will say aren't built very well so we'll have to see if it's just a bunch of soldered real thin connections and we may not use it uh, but I want to take it apart but the reason why I'm cannibalizing a brand new pump is if you can tell this thing has been uh, it, it didn't survive shipping I don't know if the shipping company actually drove over it a couple times before they dropped it off but it's <clears throat> it's busted the veins are all busted the uh, the motors all bound up so it literally is a boat anchor right now. So we're going to take apart, salvage what we want. The rest is going to go into recycling or to garbage. So we'll see what we can get into. So I think first we'll start with a switch and see if we can uh, salvage anything that's good out of it. I even like the fact that they've got the 
tamper resistant screw. So your specialty head screw there, which my little flat blade, I can get it out, but always something. All right, so I am pleasantly surprised with this. So check this out. So you lift the cover, there's the switch that we want. It's not soldered together. It's not a bunch of glued up stuff. Even the switch itself is screwed into the, to the mounting plate. So we can back that out. Everything's got a spade connector with insulation on it. And it's a crimped wire nut type situation, but we'll be able to remove the crimps there and be able to use their spade connectors and their wires. So this was a good find, not as uh, poorly put together as I expected. Okay, so the first thing I did was hook up my charge controller to my battery to make sure the charge controller still works. Like I said, it's like $15 on Amazon, it's been around a while. But it's working, it's showing uh, some output there or some life on the battery of uh, 12 and a half volts. So uh, pass that test first. So the battery box, which I'm gonna set it down in, obviously to keep the water off everything, we're gonna take the switch that we harvested from our pump, we'll cut a little hole in the side of the box so we can have that mounted on the outside. The whole point of that is I'd, I'd like to be able to come down just a quick flip of the switch, turn everything off, turn the, turn the energizer also off, of course, uh, without having to take the lid off the battery box just in case it's raining or something like that. Don't want to get uh, a bunch of water in there. Well, if you notice, the lawn has been mowed since I've been recording. Because the reason why is three days later, I finally got the hole cut in the box to put my switch in. So uh, doing that by hand with a knife, I thought would be the easiest, but clearly wasn't. So got my switch cut into my box and made up all my wiring. The, the neat thing I like about uh, Patriot these Patriot chargers, energizers, uh, just just little details. I love it when you find stuff like this. It's got little details, extra details bit in, built into it. And that wire came with these little alligator clips that you would normally just attach your energizer directly to the battery, but I want that to be switchable. So normally these little crimped, these little ends here where the wire attaches are normally just crimped or soldered or just kind of jakey put together. Uh, but these are actually have a little spade Clip. I don't know if you can see that there, but inside is a little spade tab that the wire slides onto and then it's crimped around. So I was able just to release that crimp, pull the spade off of there. So save these. So if I ever want to go back to just having alligator clips, then I haven't destroyed them and I can easily put them back together. So that's a nice little touch. So what I did is uh, put all my wiring together. So here's the switch or here's the wiring that goes to the plug of the energizer and just use the uh, the, the wire plugs that came with the switch because I thought those uh, yeah, had little rubber insulators on them and everything. Very nice, very sexy. And then uh, the individual bits here are just going to crimp on and go directly to the load source of my energizer. And the load source is of course going to be the energizer. So this is how this works. It has three, um, three terminals. It has input from the solar, input output from the battery, and then of course output to the actual source what you're powering. So that's gonna go directly to the energizer. Okay, before we put it all together, let's go ahead and do a test and make sure things are working uh, because <laughs> I did it. So we need to make sure it's actually going to function. So what we've got hooked up already is our power going from our battery to our charge controller. The reason why you hook that up first, of course, it powers the charge controller. So I, that was the first thing I hooked up, working fine, showing voltage there. I've got my plug here that leads, uh, it's, a, it's actually off the boys John Deere Gator, the little battery powered gators. Um, you know, obviously they're 19 and 15, so they haven't ridden that in a while. <laughs> but I gutted the batteries and took the motors out of it when we, when we uh, threw it all away. And the battery terminal plugs were just perfect for solar. Yeah, Cause solar actually can be hot. If you've got this panel, if you've got this panel just laying around and you've got leads exposed, and you've got it out in the light or even in a garage where a decent light is, then it's actually gonna be producing voltage. So if you've got two bare wires on the end there, you could be asking for trouble. So we're gonna plug this in here and make sure our charge controller shows that the solar panel is actually producing juice. It's alive. If you can see that, but there's a little solar panel graphic that shows up and a little blinky light showing that power is coming into the battery. And of course you can actually see the voltage of the battery charge changing. So now we need to take our leads coming out of our load. That's what the little light bulb means is our load. And I've just got the two plugs. 
that are going to go into our battery box here. So we've got uh, actually switching both uh, hot and ground, which a 12 volt you don't have to, but that's the way it was set up. So we're going to match it, and then our lead's going directly to our energizer. Ground. Hot. which is in the off position. So let's turn it on. I'm hearing nothing. Time to get the voltmeter out. So here's one for you. For the sake of editing, obviously I turned off the camera to see why it didn't work. Went over, switched the plugs out, plugged it into the 110, it worked. Came back, plugged it back in, it worked. I don't know. So just double check my wires, make sure nothing's loose. But uh, we're getting a pulse. I put my uh, fence tester on it, getting nine kilovolts for this little guy. So uh, that'll be plenty for the chicken poultry netting. I'm sure most of you know don't ever put a voltmeter on your energizer unless it's a really really good one it can handle that type of voltage because it'll just blow them up I made a mistake a long time ago so no let's give it a shot poof crispy circuits all right now it's time to put it all together and make it look sexy okay just a simple application here just tucked everything in this battery box comes with a little gate here that keeps the battery pushed to one side so simply just have my energizer my charge controller down there laying flat so i can pop the lid check out see how things are going and the wire that's going coming in from the solar panel will fit in this little notch and then of course our energizer wire when it's hooked up we'll just drop down in another one of those little notches and the lid will go on and keep it uh, keep the rain off of it so let's go hook it up and give it a test drive just in time for the rain to come Take the old one out of rotation. Sexy, <laughs> sexy. So I put this little alligator clip on the fence back when I had it around the greenhouse as what I thought would be a quick disconnect. And I think I may have mentioned this on a previous video. Quick disconnect, so that's how I hook it up to the poultry netting. And it works fine coming down to uh, undo it in the evenings when there's no dew. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that there's about 10,000 volts coursing through that, that little thin rubber, especially when there's a lot of dew <laughs> or rain on it, you got to grab that. It's not insulated. <laughs> it's one of those, am I going to get hit by it today or not? So that's why I want the kill switch on the battery box. All right, let's test and see what we're getting on our fence. All right, so we're getting just a little over four kilovolts, which is great. That's actually more than I was getting with the 110 charger that zariba so uh, i like the fact that i'm getting a little more juice there the grass is a little tall in this area so i think we'll call that a winner so an additional step i'm going to need to do of course is make a stand for the solar panel unfortunately south facing is 
that way up the mountain. <laughs> so, what we'll do, this the sun will rise just back over here a bit and in the evening times, of course it's cloudy right now, but in the evening times the sun comes right down the valley and actually sits lower back there. So we'll have the solar panel hooked up facing to catch afternoon and evening sun. So I'm hoping that'll be fine. When we go further up north up the valley, then that'll give us more option to point back south facing. When we go up on the ridge behind the house, then we'll have all kinds of south facing. All right, there's one more thing I want to do the coop that actually has nothing to do with the energizer, but it's really a way to commission this and give it a good send off. And I want to thank some of the viewers. Uh, several of you made this suggestion and so we're picking up on that. So I appreciate you guys that uh, threw that advice out there. So watch this. I dub thee the Red Tool House Coupe de Ville. <laughs> so, so there we go. Had some vinyl made up there that we could put on, make it really nice. And we, uh, I didn't video it, but we put it into the opposite side as well, of course. Gotta be symmetrical around here. Gotta look really nice around here. Well, it looks like we beat the rain and we'll keep everyone posted on how the Energizer does and the solar system and all that. Cause you know, nothing ever breaks around here. All right, take care, everybody. Well, Brady, 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 well, you know you've done wrong. Busting in here with a game going on. Knocking down windows, knocking down doors. Now you're landed on the ballroom floor. Now 